What's going on, everyone? Happy Saturday to everyone. Hopefully, everyone is doing well, staying safe, healthy. If you had to take a COVID test, hopefully you have tested negative. If you did test positive, I hope you have a full and speedy recovery with no long COVID issues. It is time now for the Saturday edition of the Pandemic Update for Saturday, March 23rd, 2024. If you're new to my channel, this is where we do the daily pandemic update on all things COVID and any other virus that could be a health threat to you such as the first story we're going to talk about, measles. Yes, that's not COVID related, but hey, we're going to talk about it today because it is a problem. Want to stay informed with what's going on with COVID and all the viruses? Subscribe to my channel down below. Got a comment? Leave a comment down below. Like what you see here? Give it a thumbs up. The more comments and likes we get, the more YouTube shares our content throughout the algorithm. And of course, you can help share the content by hitting that share button down below. All right, we do have some news stories that we're going to talk about today. Then we're going to take a look at some of the data that we usually look at, such as what's going on locally here, where I am in Philly. That's right. We have uh, EMS data we can look at here. I wish we could look at it for anywhere else in the country. We can't. We're also going to take a look at some CDC data and, of course, some state data around the United States that we did not get to earlier in the week. All right, starting off today up in New York State, in specifically Nassau County on Long Island, where there is a confirmed case of measles in an unvaccinated child. So yes, this is a problem. Measles continues to rise. If you want to read the full story, I have that tweeted out on my Twitter page, at COVID Data Report, and you can read the full story there, and you will see stuff such as exposures and all that uh, stuff that you need to know about this measles case. All right, moving on to this now. Now we have to go internationally. I know, it's been a while since we've gone international with COVID, but we need to talk about China for a brief second. Breaking, COVID-19 cases are surging in China. As per local media, JN.1 spawns, JN1.16, JN1.18, and now KP.2, and a variant KQ.1. haven't heard of the KQ.1 before. I have heard of KP.2, and I actually have it written down here. It's one that I'm watching, that if I find more about KP.2, of course, then I will bring it to you. But right now, stuff is very sketchy. But again, take a look at this picture here. Emergency rooms in hospitals are starting to get crowded, overcrowded in some cases, with both young and old patients. So China, yes, parts of China, COVID is starting to rise again. Not a good thing to see. Moving on to this now. Speaking of uh, international, we have to stay international for a moment. Tuberculosis. It's rising in London. London is the national hotspot in the UK for the infection, which was called consumption by the Victorians. And take a look here. The big smoke. I don't know what the big smoke means. If you do, let me know down below. Is it an agency there? I honestly don't know. The big smoke logged 29 suspected cases last week, almost three times as many as other badly affected regions. So yes, London, look at this. Okay, so I can see here on the map, maybe they're referring to a region when they say the big smoke, but look at that. Here's London down here. It's the rest of the UK. Yeah, there's a rise into Berkeley osis cases over there. I mean, if measles wasn't enough, now we have to add tuberculosis rising. And we've seen random cases of it here in the United States, but the UK, it seems to be picking up the pace. We'll see if that translates to anything here in the United States in the coming weeks. As you know, we lag them by a few weeks. Speaking of other illnesses, we got to stay on other illnesses. Sounds like there is a mysterious illness going around in Texas, Panhandle, and New Mexico, which is affecting dairy cows. And what I'm reading from this article is that it lasts anywhere from 10 to 14 days and the disease peaks in about three to four days and it is putting a strain on their production. You know, when they go to strain the milk from a cow, uh, it seems like they are getting less milk. There's a decline of about 10 to 20 percent. It's mysterious. They don't know what this is. They don't know what's causing it. It's affecting the older population of dairy cattle more than it is the younger population. Hopefully they can get to the bottom of this, and if we see any update on this, I will let you know about it. All right, moving on now, back to COVID. 
Do you think the media should do better and report on COVID more often? Now, we posted this a little late last night, 1044 at night. It got about 285 votes. Didn't get a lot of votes. Some of my polls get more, some get less. This one got less. Hey, that's okay. But of the small sampling, we got 97.9% .9 said yes, the media needs to do more. 2.1%, just a measly 2.1% said no. You know, one of the reasons why I started this channel back in the day was because the media was doing such a poor job. And plus, I just wanted to collect and have a place where you have a, pro a daily program about what's going on with the pandemic and all these other viruses. Back in the beginning, it was strictly just COVID. But then we started branching off to other viruses. Here in Pennsylvania, where I live, Penn State University puts out a 15-minute weather program every day. Me, I do a 15 or 10 to 20 minutes program about viruses that could impact your health. So yes, the majority, and again, it was only 285 votes. 97.9% .9 say the media needs to do better. I mean, come on, we get a weather report. We get the local news. We get traffic reports in some areas that are more populated. I think there should be a virus report of some, port, some sort in the news. If not daily, at least weekly. I think it should be maybe about three minutes of the news broadcast. But you know what? You know why they don't do it? Because the viruses do not bring ratings. That's why they don't do it. All right. Moving on now. We have to take a look at air qualities for today. And I have to refresh this because it has grayed out on us like it always does. And we will see here that air quality today, mm, there are some problem spots in the United States. The majority of those locations are right along the Gulf Coast on northward into Ohio, Illinois, Indiana. And look where it's stemming from. Yet again, Texas and Oklahoma seem to be the culprit smoke. I believe there's still some smoke going on. I'll have to do some research and get back to you that on that for tomorrow, but it's going to happen. It continues to be dry in parts of these areas, so yes, when there's wildfires, air quality is going to be bad. In the east, it's clearing out just a little bit because of this humongous storm system that came through. We've got nearly three inches of rain here in northeast Philadelphia today. Unbelievable. I mean, this has been one of the wettest winters I have ever seen. All right, moving on. West Coast, still the usual bad spots, and that's going to be the case going forward. All right, taking a look now. Philly, EMS total calls yesterday, 713, and we have to take a look at something else from Philadelphia today. Yeah, this is kind of uh, strange. I would like to think it's in good intentions, but something you don't see too often. And at the end of this portion, if you know of anywhere else that's doing this, which, which I'm about to explain about, please let me know in the comments down below. Let me read this. Philadelphia Public Health. That's the health department in Philadelphia. Free COVID testing is available at the following locations next week. Okay, you're probably thinking, oh, those rapid tests. No. Well, yes, but no. Stop by one of the following locations for free rapid tests and PCR testing, test kits, and face masks. The big takeaway here is free PCR testing. In other words, you won't even need insurance. And there's actually another tweet about it because they did it a few days before. And they said, insurance not necessary. What? This day and age when PCR testing is oh so expensive. Again, I want to hope they're doing it in good intentions. But do they know of a rise that's going on in the city that we don't know about or something else? Also, uh, you're hearing the word free. Where are they getting the money from to do that? I don't know. Very interesting. Again, I would like to hope, hey, that's for good intentions. Let's take a look at our suburbs here real quickly. We can see not busy at all for calls, and it continues that way. A little bit busier in Chester County, Pennsylvania, where we have respiratory difficulty, back pain, heart problems fall, heart problems fall, syncopede, Allergic reaction, ooh, not good. Dead on arrival. All right, taking a look at Walgreens for this week. 15.4% is the national positivity rate. That's a difference of down 1.6%. And now let's take a look at a couple of wastewater scan sites looking at the West Coast because we just gave the East Coast a lot of attention and we need to give the West Coast some attention as well. Let's go to Ontario, California. This is like well east of LA, like the, I guess the, I guess you would say, almost near San Bernardino, and uh, taking a look here, and you can see here, wastewater, it is low at this time for COVID, RSV has dropped, 
but is holding steady at this point. Uh, influenza has dropped. Slight rise once again for influenza B. So influenza A is steady. It's really low at this time. And influenza B is slightly rising. HMPV starting to drop again. Norovirus has leveled off at this time. Mpox, no issues. And hepatitis A, not seeing any issues with that at this time. All right, zooming out, let's take a look at one more wastewater scan site. Again, we will be doing wastewater uh, tomorrow, we'll be taking a look at quite a few wastewater sites. Here's uh, Boise, Idaho. And you can see for COVID, it has dropped. RSV is rising ever so slightly at this time. Influenza is flat at this time. Influenza B is rising. And HMPV is seeing a rise. Norovirus, it's starting to rise here. It's getting a little concerning at this time. Mpox, not much of an issue. And Hepatitis A does have some detections. Alrighty, moving on now, taking a look at some data that has come in for this week. Here's hospital occupancy for the United States. We can see the ICU usage is at 71.1%, COVID-19 is at 1.5%, influenza is at 1% of the beds being used at this time. Then when we take a look at inpatient, that is 76.1% of all beds are currently being used. 1.5% of that's for COVID. 0.9% is for influenza. I think tomorrow we'll take a look at some more individual states. I was going to do that today, but eh, we're running a little behind here because we got quite a bit more data to go through. All right, taking a look at deaths. Deaths are pretty much flat this week. If anything, they're down slightly across the United States. Hospital ocu or hospital admissions, I should say now, are down by 20.9%, so that is really good. And COVID-19 hospital admissions in the past week, 10,719. Continuing on here, epidemic status. It's either stable, likely declining, or declining for COVID in all states of the United States. Can't say the same for influenza because of one state, and that one state is Kansas, where it is still likely growing for influenza. Stable or uncertain, likely declining or declining everywhere else. No states are in the growing status at this time. Taking a look at the latest variant data, 86.5% of the... Um, cases are JN.1 variant. JN1.13 is 9.5% of the cases, and JN.1, JN1.18, I should say, is 1.8% of the cases. We'll get a new update on that late next week. Influenza, take a look here. Let's uh, loop this a little bit. You can see how it started off low, then it started peaking around Christmas time, then the holidays ended, then it started dropping, then we saw a second peaking in some areas back in February, and now take a look. It's dropping in a lot of places. There's still a few states that are high, and there is still one very high state, which is Nebraska, and Washington, D.C. is still seeing very high status at this time. But for the most part, the majority of the regions are dropping. Just some states or regions, such as the Great Lakes, may take a little bit longer to drop. I mean, Ohio, it's going to take more time. Nebraska, probably a few more weeks for you. New Mexico, maybe a few more weeks for you as well. Back to COVID now. New Jersey, COVID hospitalizations. 67 out of 70 hospitals reported. We have 283 hospitalizations. Would be higher if three more hospitals did report. On a ventilator, 18. Discharges, 31. And in the ICU, 46 at this time. No update on New York State cases today. I'll refresh it, though, just to be sure. They normally do not update on the weekends anymore. Tested positive on the most recent update, 730. And when we take a look at statewide hospitalizations, you will see here, they're not really dropping that much anymore. They're just bouncing around off the bottom at this point. Now, see here, just bouncing around. And the most recent number is 691. In the ICU is 87 at this time. All right, we have to switch browsers. Why do we have to switch browsers? Because we have a whole other bank of tabs where we now take a look at several different states. First off, Connecticut. Connecticut, for influenza this week, 324 cases versus 940. Remember, that is incomplete for the week. To date, and mind you, not everybody gets tested for influenza. They've had 24,770 influenza cases. COVID-19, current week, 153 cases. Previous week was much higher at 577. Even with this uh, incomplete data for both levels of uh, influenza COVID, well, actually all three because RSV as well, um, it's a significant drop. Season to date, there have been 51,236 COVID cases. 
Again, that does not include at-home tests or people who are not getting tested. So it's likely much, much higher for COVID. And RSV, current week, 32. Previous week, 65. Season to date, 13,594. Again, not everyone's getting tested for RSV. I tried to get tested for RSV in Pennsylvania uh, a ways back. And, well, they didn't want to do it. And they didn't want to do it for COVID as well. So, again, it's difficult to get tested at this time. All right. Moving on now to another state, California. And we can see for California, COVID hospital admissions, they're dropping at this time. Deaths are dropping. Uh, the positivity rate is at 2.7%. That's actually leveled off ever so slightly. Influenza positivity rate is down by 0.2%. That's now at 5%. Influenza deaths at this time have uh, continued to drop. And influenza hospital admissions, they're down as well. 184 new influenza hospital admissions. And I should mention for COVID, it was 1,038. LA at this time, look at this, good news. Hospitalizations down, deaths down. Testing, actually holding steady at this time. Just an ever so slight drop in cases are dropping at this time. Colorado, not so good news here with the hospitalization situation. It's not a big increase. 96 was on March 12th. Now it's up to 103. So it went up by 6. Again, not a big deal. And some better news is that there is um, actually a drop now in cases reported this week. 876. And I am seeing here, it's actually saying 7 is the increase for hospitalizations, not 6. Got my math wrong there. You know, I'm not perfect. All right. Taking a look here also at... Uh, Hospital admissions this week, that's actually down as well. 129, that's down by 8. Chicago this week, take a look at the city of Chicago, the big city in the Great Lakes. And their hospitalizations are down. Beds in use, down. Emergency department visits, down. Laboratory confirmed cases, down. Deaths, down. Yes, good news. Vaccinations, eh, not as many this week. All right. Taking a look now, that's what's going on in Massachusetts. Massachusetts, influenza severity. It's moderate at this time. It still needs to come down some more. COVID-19 emergency department visit level is minimal at this time. That's good. COVID-19 hospital admission level is low. Eventually, we would like to see that get to minimal. All right. Continuing on, back to the West Coast again. Taking a look at Washington, where COVID-19 is uh, for emergency department visits is down by 17%. Influenza is flat. RSV is down by 50%. Percent of hospital admissions this week is down by 20% for COVID. Influenza is 0%. Down by 67% for RSV. And when we take a look at COVID in the ICU, it's down by 6, just 13. And influenza is now unavailable because it's uh, less than 10. All right, one last state to take a look at, and that is the great state of Kentucky. Let's see what's going on with there with the levels in Kentucky. And what we see here is that levels in Kentucky at this time do continue to drop. Look at this, COVID-19 hospital admissions. Uh, they had 461 so far in March versus back in February, where it looks like they had... 775. So that is a significant decrease. Alrighty, folks, that does it for today's pandemic update. I know it was a longer update today. We had a lot of things that we covered here, a lot of different viruses. So I hope from all this, I hope you at least learned something and you realize, wow, there's a lot going on out there that I need to keep myself safe from. Yeah, you do. There's an easy way to do that. Mask, mask, mask n95 or better high quality masks are most effective when it comes to masking Alrighty, folks i'll see you all again next time if you like this give it a thumbs up want to see more content like this subscribe down below know anyone who needs to be informed or needs a wake-up call of what's going on by all means share this video with them i will see you all again next time which will be tomorrow until i see you again next time stay safe everyone and have a fantastic saturday afternoon thanks for watching